publish it. But what did you think about the common P suggestion, Barbie? So I think the common com command P recommendation will save me a lot of time in trying to have to scroll through um, the sidebar here in the project to find exactly where I want to make a change. So I am thrilled to know I can press command P and then use the words and a space to find uh, where I need to go. I think it's key to know though that it's not a slash so you don't copy exactly like it is in the URL. And instead of a slash, you use a space. And I think that's a key thing that people could get wrong if, if they're not used to working in um, Adam. Cool. So I'm gonna scroll down to uh, chat. Did I already scroll past it? Let me do a command find. I'm gonna give you some time. I'm gonna give a bit of an introduction about that common P thing that we talked about. The common P thing was like, okay, I want to make a change on the website and I know that I'm looking on like the communication page of the handbook, the URL slash handbook slash communication. How do I find that in uh, the editor? And the way to do it is you can navigate uh, the left hand menu, but it's quicker to press command P and type some words that are in the URL that are unique and then uh, have a space between them and type them in the order you want to see that mostly tends to find the thing straight away. Okay, so um, I have not yet um, switched my master here. So usually I would go into tower and I know Sid, you don't usually use tower. Uh, and I was introduced to it by Eric and I thought it made things easier. But so I go down to master, I right click, I choose my branch. I usually name it by my initials first, which now are BJB. And then I would go here and say chat. I'm wanting to make an update update about when people are out of the office. So I might just say, oh, oh, oh. May I, may I recommend you not name it with something that that that, uh, that is your personal thing. The, the thing you want to avoid is your personal workspace. And this kind of feels like it. This is my thing. And for example, is, suppose I, I see your branch and I notice you have a big spelling mistake. The, I can leave a comment, but what you really want is people to push on your branch and fix the spelling mistake. Much yeah. easier. You, yeah. they, they don't have to say, word free out of... But by recording it off, you're saying it's mine. It's not... Like it's not SIDLAB, it's GitLab. It's not, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be about you. It should be about the change you want to make. Uh, okay, so when I started, I was given the guidance to do that so that there wasn't naming convention issues and it helped to make sure that there was the, the chances that someone else will push the same branch are very low because just give it the name of the change you want to see. So you want to see chat out of office, great. I think the chances of someone doing this in the time it takes to turn around this merge request, which should be like 24 hours or something like that, are very low. And if, it, if, it, if that's the case, they just rename it. But I don't think it happened in the history of the company. So. Okay, so here's another question I have, because I was also trained to, trained to do three, not just two. I could leave it just like this with just two? Yeah, two is, two is fine, uh, considering, uh -huh. considering our volume. Now, the thing you would... If there's an issue that this relates to that is on the www GitLab issue tracker, you can start with that number and it will automatically close the issue when this gets merged. So, so that might be an interesting thing. But in case, this case, I understand there's no issue. Um, there, I don't think there is, um, but I haven't searched them. Um, that's great to know. So I start with the issue number. Do I have to do the hashtag sign first? No, uh, that's just the issue number and then a hyphen. Uh, Okay, just the issue number and the hyphen, it automatically connects. That's awesome. Yep. You've got, got some great stuff here. Okay. Uh, so then I do that, and then that automatically, usually automatically changes it here in Adam as well to show that same branch. And then I'm going to come over here, and the reason I'm doing this update today is because I've experienced and I've gotten feedback from other GitLabbers that when people are out of the office and they're getting um, mentioned in chat rooms in Slack, and they're not checking Slack every day, and they shouldn't, they're on vacation, <laughs> uh, then when they come back, it's really hard for them to find all their different mentions there. So I wanted to do a chat, an update here in the handbook, just to recommend that if you know that someone's on vacation, either because you looked at, you know, from their calendar, you know, because you've spoken to them, or ideally, they say in Slack <laughs> that 
they're on vacation and they put themselves out of office in Slack, then avoid mentioning them in Slack because it may be hard for them to go back and find those. If you do mention them, then you might wanna check back when they get back from vacation. So I wanted to do something there for updating that in the handbook. Um, so let me take a moment to write that up. Is Slack rooms the right, how, how would I phrase that? Sid? I would say in a high volume channel. Like if it's, if it's our pricing channel or our handbook channel, it doesn't matter. If you're mentioning someone in development or general, then that or, or random, mm -hmm. high volume chat channel, you can make it. Should we say an email may be better or just leave it at that? Yeah, it depends a bit. Like, you know, yeah, these, these conferences, you want to mention them because there's a relevant conversation going on. So how are you going to point them to them? So there's an email. What are you going to put in the email? I think a, um, a direct me you're in Slack already. So now they're not, they're not finding out about this thing that's super relevant to them. And they're, they're not going to, they're not going to know anyway. Um, so I would say leave, just uh, send them personally a link to that message. Although I noticed that Slack links are a bit broken, but I think so be it. We can't help that. Hopefully Slack will fix it at some point. So I would say um, send them the URL that links to the message in a direct message on chat. Okay. Even though you don't, even though you're not sure the URLs are, URLs are good, you still would recommend sending the URL? Yeah, I think it's the best option. And I, I hope that Slack uh, will f fix this soon. Because the problem is what, what it will show, Slack will just show you, you've been mentioned and there's been 3000 comments since. Like, yes, thank you very much Slack. And you can't use comment find, so it's super hard. Okay. But if if it's like a, a link to the relevant Slack message, then it will just scroll to there and it's not perfect, but that's how the world should work. It can help, it can help that it doesn't. Okay, so do you think that's clear? Uh, it's clear to me. Okay, if anyone doesn't think it is, they can make it clear. Cool, great. All right, so then I usually do a command S to save. Great. Then I come back into tower and I go to working copy and usually it will show up here that I've got something that I've changed. And then I do a subject line updating. So um, the small thing, the updating is kind of redundant. It's a commit message. So you're updating something. Okay. Um, so just, just say what you want, want to achieve. Yeah, that's great. Perfect. And then I click commit. And then after hitting commit, I go back in my, in the, this is still the lead branch. I right click and then I click push. say push revision. Should I be doing publish instead of push? No, push sounds fine. I don't know what publish is. I don't know, back when I used to do this stuff, when I was at Cisco, there was a push to staging and then a push to production. So I, I wasn't sure if there, if that's what it really is. That, that's kind of the, that, that's what you do locally. You have a staging area locally. So maybe push, publish generates the merge request. That would be nice. If you do it via the comment line, GitLab will just send you a URL where to create the merge request. So. Yeah, let's see when this is over, if there's a merge request. If not, then I'll publish it and then we'll see if that creates a merge request. Good idea. Okay. Test 
update out here. It says it's pushed, but it says it's updating the local rec tracking records. But there it is right there. So I'll create the merge request this way. You're saying that if I had done publish, then maybe the merge request already would have been? Yeah, you come directly, you click that URL, you come directly here. So no need to navigate to gitlab.com, no need to press that blue button. And let me not do that, let me test that first. Right, we can do it, let's, let's, Barbie, let's do this. This was just a, a thought, let's, let's finish this, it's fine. Because I'm, I'm, I'm very unsure whether Publish will do that. So I don't want to waste our time. And I say remove source branch, right? Yep. I'm assigning it to you, Sid. Awesome. And then I do submit merge request, and then I hope that I find it. <laughs> cool. And I've set it to update, so we're done. Do you want to show me how you do it? Sure, we can. Uh, I can do that. Let me stop sharing then. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I don't have anything on my desktops. I don't know which one I'll be sharing. So I should be sharing this one. Um, what I would do, so open it. I think it was handbook communications. I won't type it out full. I'll just say the first letters and then it's this one. And to find the chat part, I'll type uh, a hash and then chat, space and then chat. So I'll find the right section immediately. Still do need to pull. I do that with GL. I have that set up as an allies in my uh, dot files. And where are you? What 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 um, tool are you using to do this, Sid? So this is Visual Studio Visual Studio Code, and uh, Barbie's uh, improvement is not yet merged uh, because it's still testing. So I'll just make a a trick. Here. And then I'll change it. Um, no need for extra indentation. So GCA is also in the dot files. It basically uh, does uh, commit all. So it first adds it. It's a commit with a hyphen A. And now with GP, I pushed it. And now I should see that magical URL I talked about earlier. And if you notice in the, here in the, in the bottom, you can see, um, oh, and I push directly to master. So now the website is improved. So I do this a lot and uh, see advantage of being CEO. You can uh, uh, push directly to master, but suppose you don't have those uh, rights. Um, you might uh, you might want to do something different. So let's look. Let's make another change. Yeah, and I prefer even if I had the rights, I still kind of like the idea that I get a chance to review it first. Yep, then... makes sense. So I, I went to another branch. I commit a, like indentation after a title, something we'd like to see. Push that. The indentation after a title isn't needed, but it's according to our guidelines, and I think it. Looks prettier. But we still have to uh, make a, a job. And then here is it. I press, um, I thought it was command. Yep, I press command and I can, I'm then, I go to a browser. Hey, this doesn't work. This would work in my iTerm, but this doesn't work yet in Visual Studio Code. And I have no idea why that is. Would you say that um, using Visual Studio Code is better for 
people more comfortable coding and maybe Tower and Adam is better for people who are less comfortable coding? Or do you think that someone who is less technical should feel just as comfortable doing it your way? I think Visual Studio Code is, um, yeah, it's just harder. It's harder for everyone to use stuff on the, on the comment line. Does it matter where you're from? Uh, um, however, like, like using it, it, it's, it's, it will be faster. So you kind of have to invest a bit of time and then make it faster after all. By the way, if you wonder how you get a terminal, it's uh, control tilde. You can create a terminal in Visual Studio Code. So it's, it's not about, um, this is for those people, this is for those people. It's kind of in using the command line in Visual Studio Code, it's kind of a time investment in order to be more effective. And one thing is in Tower, sometimes you, you cannot do certain things. You can, so for example, you want to cherry pick something that, that tends to be hard. So it's easier to begin, but then when you have to transfer to do something complicated, um, it's much harder in, uh, because then you have to make the, the transition to command line and do something difficult at the same time. And that's super hard. So you, you'd rather be working from the command line the whole time uh, and not, not have to make the transition when you have to do something hard. And like if you, if you do have to do something hard and get your Google, you'll find a stack overflow thing. You'll try that command and then that command's not going to tell you how to do it in tower. So I think for, for our team members, it's probably after their first initial steps, it's probably worth the investment to, to learn the command line and then use Visual Studio uh, code, uh, a proper editor. Okay. All right. <laughs> but, uh, but thanks, Barbie. I was looking for an easy way out. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's no easy way out. But no. hey, you're, you're already effective. You're already doing it yourself. Uh, I, that's good enough. And it's not that you have to, to use Visual Studio Code or otherwise you're doing it wrong. And some of the things we've, we've made in GitLab are because our, our own team members complained. Like, for example, they had to resolve merge conflicts and we're like, yeah, use an editor. And they're like, I don't, I want to use the online editor. And we're like, Okay, that makes sense. We'll we'll fix it. So so we we were the first um, Git software where you could do a merge conflict, uh, uh, resolve that online, and I'm still proud of that. And that's because uh, our own team members complained. So it's not the answer shouldn't be use this tool. Uh, the answer should be how can we how can we change GitLab to make it easier for you? Okay, excellent. Thank you, Sid. Cool. Thank you, Barbie.